Hi everyone. In this video, I want to show you how to create uh, the texture for those trails. So um, I think in the previous video, we've tried to do uh, meshes in Houdini. And now I just want to show you what's actually um, I'm adding to those meshes. So it will be that uh, trail texture and that you can see here. So let me isolate that uh, for you. I think I've got another version which are those lard trails. Okay, so it will be just another iteration on the trails. I think we've done some of the trails before in our previous videos, but this time we're just gonna try to create some uh, some trails. Maybe there will be some uh, different technique uh, that you might benefit from. All right, so let's jump into Substance now. Okay, so I want to start with Perlin Noise this time. I'm going to run it through cross section and as you can see we're getting this very wavy pattern so I'm going to change the settings of drawing style on that note to gradient mirrored and we're getting this uh, wavy uh, texture. Next will be the histogram scan because I actually want to use the contrast and the position in the histogram scan to get this very wavy pattern. I think I'm going to scroll down, sorry, go down with the contrast a little bit because I really like those soft edges. And now just going back to palette noise and adjusting the scale. I'm going to maybe keep scale at four and change the disorder so we get a little bit different patterns. And I think I'm going to, uh, I'm going to stick maybe with, with something like this for now. Remember, we can always go back and tweak those settings and get a, little, a lot more different uh, shapes out of uh, our uh, graph. The next thing would be to use a uh, warp, simple warp with sound, parallel noise as well. I think I'm going to keep the parallel maybe uh, with a scale of uh, 10. Plug this in and we're getting a lot more distortion than our original texture. And this is what I'm after. So I'm going to change the scale to two, see what I could get. But I think I'm going to just keep it maybe at 1.2. Okay, now I want to just blur this. Uh, let's maybe stick to the default value. I think default was 10. So we're losing a lot of data, but let's just keep going. Uh, the next one is I actually want to blend it. Uh, with one of those textures. So I'm just going to bring um, uh, this generator, decrease the amount on uh, Y maybe to 12, and uh, blur it. Maybe not that much. And I think I just want to run it through the slope first. So slope blur grayscale. Okay, cool. And we're getting that distortion on those uh, on our texture, which is what I'm after. And now I'm actually going to blend this together with our original texture and see what I could get. Uh, subtract, no. Multiply, maybe. Well, let's keep it multiply. Okay. Actually, with multiply, we're losing a lot of edges. So let's try maybe different uh, a blending mode. Maybe copy. I'm actually going to use copy with opacity to on 0.5. So we're kind of getting this uh, effect of both of those textures set to 0.5 opacity. Okay, I'm going to run it through auto levels. And the next thing would be uh, just to get variety. So I'm just going to use a warp for this. I'm going to use cells uh, texture. Well, I'm going to try to use it and see if it actually going to give us some good results with some blur. Right, so we're getting 
and a little bit of that distortion, but I think I want to scale back down this cell texture and maybe reduce that blur on it as well. Let's ramp it up to maybe higher setting. I quite like the... It seems like it's kind of like a liquid, maybe a little bit. So I just, I really like this. I'm just going to keep this for now. And I want to blur it as well to get a little bit more softer shapes, maybe. The only thing I don't like is that we lost a lot of this soft, sh um, soft shapes around our trail. Maybe there might be a way later on how we can bring this back. Maybe we could grab our blur and blur it again. And use the blend node here. Let's see if we can just um, use one of the blending uh, nodes to bring this in. I'm going to change the order. We're getting a little bit, but not too much. I'm just going to get rid of that blur to zero. Let's see if that gives us anything. Not really. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this blur. And this one as well. Okay, so the next thing, maybe let's try. Let's continue. Maybe we can always go back and see if we can uh, adjust it. But for now, let's just keep going. I'm going to use directional blur. Sorry, directional warp, <clears throat> and I'm actually going to warp it with um, with this one again. So I'm just going to copy it and paste it here. And I think I'm, I want to increase the uh, Y amount. Okay. So I get a lot more distortion. Uh, let's see if we can manipulate the slider, but it doesn't give us anything. Okay, I'm going to change the intensity to much higher. Can I do minus maybe? Okay. Okay, but I just want a little bit, so maybe minus 20. Now let's see if it tiles properly. So I'm just going to use transform for this and offset on one axis. And it does style. So now maybe let's just add some uh, details to it and maybe use a. Let's use maybe slope blur. And for our slope blur, I'm just going to use a very blurred version of this. different settings and I don't think it gives us uh, better results so I'm just gonna get rid of it stick to the transformation and let's see if we can actually add maybe some details to it so I'm gonna use maybe edge detect I'm gonna invert it I'm gonna use blend um, blend this edge that I can to go at the top so we can control the intensity of it and we just want just a little bit of those edges uh, there and now we're gonna blur it but we're gonna keep it at zero for now and we're gonna blend it back together just in case because I have a feeling that we will need additional data of that blur uh, on outside and I'm gonna use add Maybe not add, uh, maybe max. Yep, okay, so max will work. Mm, let's see if maybe we could get rid of some uh, some of the data from that texture in some random places. So I'm just gonna use cells, uh, but I'm gonna invert it. 
and I'm gonna blend it with the subtract as a blending mode. Obviously the scale of it is way too high, so I'm just gonna give it maybe two. Mm, let's try five. And I think we've got like a really nice, um, super bright areas and the dark areas uh, as well. And let's see if we can increase this blur, if we're gonna get additional data. We do, but actually it blurs our texture. So I don't think that's what I want. Unless I can plug this into opacity. No, it's still it's not gonna work. Right, so I'm gonna keep this blur basically to zero. Okay, let's try maybe to uh, create some colors for it. So I'm gonna keep this orange or maybe yellowish and right up here it will be reddish I'm gonna add a glow to it as for the glow I'm just gonna go for this orange color and glow amount I don't want this to be too much and the softness of it so I just actually want to be maybe max it so we got this uh, flamey trail I think and um, I think it might work very very nicely I actually want to add some glow to it uh, for our grayscale so I'm just gonna blend it I'm gonna take a blur node And I'll try to add it into our texture. I think Max might work the best. Uh, I want to run it through another warp. And I want to use Crystal's uh, generator. I think it gave me some really good results in the past, so I'm just I might just give it a go. Yeah, crystal one. And some blur on it as well. As for the intensity, I'm gonna start with 10. Obviously, that's way too much, but let's scale down the crystals. And I think we're getting this really nice uh, liquid like effects for that. Uh, for our trial so let's take our generator for the colors let's plug it in and I think personally that looks really cool so I'm just gonna duplicate this and maybe run it through a different color versions just to see how it might look So we might use it for some sort of ice effect maybe. I'm gonna bring those a little bit maybe closer together and in here I actually wanna um, kind of purple like color and maybe I wanna smooth this transition between those colors as well. a little bit together I think we actually might use this for some really icy effect obviously with the glow now maybe let's pick something uh, blueish Yeah, the only thing I don't like is actually that purple, so I'm just going to go back and uh, tweak that purple a little bit more. 
try to pick something a bit more bluish. I think, to be honest, the flames, flamey color works the best. Maybe I got a little bit too much white hit there. But yeah, that's our grayscale. I'm gonna run it through all the levels just in case. Oh, seems like it's a fairly leveled texture. Uh, let me try another variation maybe. I think that addition of the third node here actually destroys that texture. So maybe we can keep that one and make it a bit more brighter. Okay, well, so let me go into gradient editor. Yeah, I think that looks um, a little bit better. And now I can come and just tweak that and glow a little bit. Okay. Right, for this one, let me change the colors. We could try green to see if it actually, if it could work. So it could be like a, a venom maybe or some sort of poison effect and in here i'm just gonna try maybe a bit more yellowish color for the glow uh, let me double check if it's actually tiles so i'm gonna offset it on one of the axes and i think those looks pretty cool right okay so this is another tutorial for the trails I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I think the crystal addition was very nice and just um, add a bit more uh, kind of fluid-like effect to the to the texture. Uh, so that was our original one, and I think with the addition of that uh, warp, we kind of getting this. I really like that uh, texture personally. So let me just maybe increase the warp on it. As you can see, we're kind of getting a lot more data on it. So if you wanna. If you want to have a lot more breaks in your texture, maybe increase, um, is it that, increase it that way, and that might be one of the ways. All right, I hope you enjoyed this one, and uh, thanks for watching.